Hi, my name is Natalia Bell, and I am the director, producer, and writer of Pasos de Valor. And I am a filmmaker currently who's really passionate about stories about women who rise up. And uh, I'm Ryan Wagner. I'm the director of Lost in Erin Corps. And uh, I am a director living in Los Angeles, uh, currently making music videos and short films. Lost in Erin Corps is a short film about uh, a, a younger sister named Lucy who uh, wants nothing more than to save her older sister from depression and that manifests in this sort of fantastical fairy tale where she's trying to rescue the princess from the Baron of Darkness. And Pasos de Valor is a story that follows Valentina, a pregnant MBA student whose exam date and her due date conflict and her professor uh, is not willing to accommodate this conflict. The first thing I would love is just for you to talk about like your personal connection to yours. I'd love just to hear you talk about like where it came from. Yeah, absolutely. So this film and this story is actually a, the story of Pasos de Valor is a story that I've grown up with. So I heard my birth story growing up over the years. And I think when I was reflecting on that story, you know, the story of my mom, her getting her MBA, you know, how I came into the world, um, I just realized and had a new perspective on it. One where I realized a lot more of the elements of heritage that came from that moment and the impacts that's had on my life. And then also how, you know, that's a very common story in a lot of ways. And I also saw like the moments of inequity as part of that story. And so, I wanted to bring kind of a my own telling to a story that I was already really familiar with. I think the there are a lot of moments that are like borrowed from real life. So my mm -hmm. mom yeah. really was an MBA student. She really was really, really pregnant. Um, and she breastfed me in the hallway during her final um, after having a lot of conflict with that professor about the, the timing of it because she thought she very well could go into labor even during the exam. And so um, so all of those elements were really true to the story. I think what I did is that I really wanted to focus on the, the threads of heritage, this moment and how these spaces you know, impact her family, impact her as a person, and impact how she's navigating her way as a student and then in the future as a professional. I'm curious as like, like, it's not just a true story, it's like your true story and like your mother's true story. You know, it's so personal. Like, did you run into difficulty with, um, caring too much about whether or not it was like historically accurate or like a slightly fictionalized like piece of work when it is so personal and true like how, how emotionally did you handle that i think i found a lot of strength in that it was my own story you know and being a mexican-american uh filmmaker i think that that gave that really gave me a lot of confidence and a lot of like strength in getting to tell my own story um, so from the beginning, I kind of had decided that I knew the story so well, so I wanted to pick and choose the moments to tell what I as a filmmaker wanted to convey in my 15, 18 minutes um, of screen time. And so I found a lot of power in that experience. I found that that in a way was also, you know, I was depicting, um, you know, someone who is running into traditions that didn't serve her and also was trying to create new traditions. And I also felt like I was creating new traditions, you know, even in telling my own story in this way, and also, you know, living out a very full expression of being an artist. Um, that's not something that's been a tradition in my family or gets to be a tradition in a lot of Latino families. And so I think that in itself was also really empowering and awesome. You know, you've talked about how like, this is a story you knew from birth. Like, was there anything that you discovered about the truths of this story by actually making it like were there were there new understandings did you did you learn anything new from the process itself i think for me one thing that really i felt very strongly it's one thing to know something it's another thing to feel it but i felt very strongly like the power of a community over the course of its life like hundreds of people have touched or shaped or talked about or informed or financed in some ways this film and I think that, that that has really brought me close to that moment in my mom's life too, of just being like, these moments are like these milestones that you make, they don't happen by the power of like one person, they happen 
by the support of many. And I, I find that yeah. really empowering and really special. Are you an autobiographical director or was this like a, a, a new experience creating something like so personal to you? Um, for a long time, I've like really been interested in stories about women. And so like part of my artistic background is that I had a business where I focused on portraiture um, of other young women. A lot of my, my stories up until now have always centered around a female experience. And I think in reflection of like, where, where am I really passionate about? I'm like super passionate about women who rise up. I would also love to hear about the intention um, that informed your film. Mine was also my, my senior thesis film. I did not write it. My friend Desi wrote it. He's a fantastic writer. Um, and it's his story in a lot of ways. And so I, I wanna make sure I'm not like speaking for him too much. What, what was really powerful, like from the get go about that story to me is that like, I mean, I'm someone who's like been depressed like forever and I have a younger brother and my younger brother has like watched from a distance me struggle with, with whatever I was struggling with that week. And Desi, the writer, is a younger brother and his older brother like dealt with his own stuff. And so what was what was cool about the two of us coming together on this is that I felt we both like could kind of respectfully handle the like both sides of the story, like, you know, what it is like to be someone struggling and what it is like to help someone or want to help someone who is struggling. And so though I was not like the the person coming up with the story from the the beginning it's like it's it's something i've i've also like known my whole life the way that you're you're saying this about your film balancing the two worlds was was fun it was cool we got to kind of make two different movies in one but like it was the first time i really played with like genre very much like the the fantasy stuff and so it was cool and i'd, I'd love to talk you know you're here here what, what you have to say about this stuff but like it was cool to you know really divide the looks of the two worlds make different camera decisions, make different production design decisions. But yeah, like creating the two distinct worlds was something that we cared about a lot and really, you know, talked about how to how to like honor that idea. I'd be curious, well, your spaces were so distinct and I think you moved, but you also moved through them. Like those transitions into the spaces were really beautiful. Um, how did you think about, okay, these are my tools I'm really gonna use. Well, it's, it's a good question and it's something that we talked about a lot and something that I'm not sure if we entirely figured out while making the movie because we wanted to make sure that it felt cohesive and that it didn't feel like two separate films. Um, and I think, you know, really latching on to stuff that, like, you know, the storybooks, like The Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, you know, things that do navigate between real life and fantasy world. I think like we took a lot of inspiration from that. I, I grew up like a real nerd for The Wizard of Oz, which is weird, but I like read all the books. There's like, yeah, I, I, I just love fantasy. And I love this idea so much of children growing up with this idea that like magic exists in an outside world. And then as adults kind of having to come to terms with the idea that like, that there is just magic around us all the time. And like our, our natural world is very magical. In my work, I care a lot about communicating this idea that like the world is crazy, the world is magical, the world is amazing. Like there is so much to look at all the time. Um, and so, yeah, transitioning between real world, fantasy world, using sort of like storybook motifs was definitely um, our intention. It's it's silly, but the most important thing to me the entire movie was just like the way you watch someone struggling. It's just like the the gaze of just like staring at somebody that you don't know how to access. And um, that shot in particular, I mean, it's a little, that shot is a little self-indulgent and a little like theatrical, but it, it does sort of capture this feeling of like, I mean, just being lost, like just really, really not understanding how to, how to help someone you love. I think I just, I work with kids a lot. A lot of my, my stuff has little kids in it. And I think it's because I, sometimes just feel this way in the world of like wide-eyed and confused and small. I, I don't know, I, I'd be curious to know like how, what your directing experience has been like with children or um, if you bring a different energy. I, 
I definitely bring a different energy to kids than adults. Um, I like working with kids a little more than I like working with adults, to be honest. I think it's because, I mean, A, they're the only like people that think I'm funny, but then also they're like, I don't know, there's something, it's just like, if you can get a kid to not act and just like, you know, be, it's like the most exciting thing in the world where like adults, I think, especially like fantastic actors, like there is just so much like processing happening. And like, I mean, there, there, there are adults that are incredibly <laughs> naturalistic, but like with a kid, there is just sort of like a purity where my approach is to just truly get them like in that headspace, not to have them pretend anything at all, but to like get them there with our, our, our actress, Casey, who's who played Lucy, the young girl. Um, there's the one scene where she's like shaking Audrey and, and trying to get her to wake up and everything. They became, you know, like sisters to each other over the course of the, the few weekends that we shot this. In this one moment, like she was acting. It wasn't, it wasn't really working. She was like pretending to be sad. And it, it, it we were, we were just like trying to figure out how to do it. But I was like, uh, like Casey, like just so you know, um, this is the last shot you have with, with, um, with, with our other actress, and like, like you're never. <laughs> I said you're never gonna see her again. This is like the last, the last time that you guys get to like act together, and and the reason is because I wanted her to to feel like she was losing her sister. I, I want you know she truly loved this person, and I I wanted her in this moment to like get to a place where she she was worried she wouldn't get to be with her again. And it sounds kind of like not nice, but but it I, she appreciated it. it. Like by by the end of it, you know, it was like a really beautiful moment on set where she just like so honestly like 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 begged this this person to to stay. You know, I, I is that bad? That's... Should I not have shared that? I mean, okay. <laughs> I think it's okay. I feel like they can give you a good edit for that one. But I think what you described is like ugh, that's what that. You know, I can see how that really does trigger feelings of like loss and feelings of just like sadness and a sense of like things coming to an end, which serves that moment. That's what that, those types of feelings are part of that moment too. Acting becomes clunky when people are passing through a filter of like, what would this actually be like? You know what I mean? Then then they're, then they're, they're distanced from it. And so I find that kids can get much closer to like the the true experience sometimes than than adults can who are who are just like thinking more you know you know waiting becomes a a thing in the end it becomes a moment yeah. and i was curious is that like what do you think about waiting and like what does waiting mean to you I think in the community that i was raised at least i was just taught that we are always able to change our environment if we want and not just our environment but ourselves i was i was i was raised with a really like wonderful sense of um autonomy and like like that that we as as people not me specifically but we are are powerful and can always change anything and that's just not always true when you experience trauma or or uh, you know among other things like there are just some things that you can't change. And I don't think the conversation regarding like mental illness acknowledges that enough that like, if you aren't changed yet, then you have somehow failed. Like like this idea that like you're in, like you, like there's always more you could be doing. Like if you're, if you're still sad, then like just try this next thing. It's like, it's tough for people that aren't better yet. And it's tough for family members that want to change someone. And so I think waiting for me is um, the acceptance of the present and not fighting just like the natural processes of being a human, like not not um, criticizing yourself for, for not being farther along somewhere. It It's just like sometimes when you want to help someone, you just, you know, need to sit there and, and be there for them and, and let them process on their own time. What what advice have you received as a filmmaker that has influenced you a lot to this to this point? I think one piece of advice that I've like really latched onto recently is 
make things you love, you want to learn about, and you want to talk about for a long time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that that has served me really, really well because, um, you know, these these projects are not sprints very often. They're more more often marathons. And mm -hmm. um, I think <laughs> by investing in like the themes that I chose to invest in in this story, it I feel like I've like really learned a lesson about like how to show people who rise up and how to tell a story about, you know, a whole family and how to also tell like a very cultural and also like very personal story. And so I think those are things that I'm going to take with me. And is, that, is that something that you had to learn? Like, did you, do you feel that at one point in your artistic career, uh, you, you, you hadn't yet learned like what is most powerful to you and what is most important to you? I think I had to embody it. I think that was more important to me. Like I needed to, it's one thing to write. It's another thing to like think and to plan, but it's another thing to like embody it and then be like, yes, I did that. I could do it many times before, like over, I think in the future in different ways. Did you feel a pressure to not uh, tell stories that were authentic to you? I think sometimes it's hard to tell your own stories because they're personal and you're inviting other people into your world and your space and your perspective and that can feel very vulnerable and you don't always feel like you have the tools to tell you know tell your diverse stories or tell stories that like maybe people uh, not everyone sees all the time it's important to go through that process and find find your own process of doing that that makes you feel confident a mentor of mine one time just told me to write on a post-it note, be more honest and just like stick it to your computer when you're writing. And I did that and it really helped because I realized that a lot of times when I'm writing, I'm writing, you know, for for results, like for like uh, the reaction that I want people to have. And so it's kind of a backwards approach. Um, and I think what be more honest focuses on is just like come, come from yourself and then the result will follow. Don't 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 focus on the audience before you focus on, on like your truth and so that's helped me a lot because i mean it's made my work more personal but then it's also like make it more honest for the character like truly 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 what what happens in this moment what what does it actually feel like what are you actually looking at like it's something that i'm constantly working on because i'll I'll get to the edit of a short film and I'll be like, oh my God, like we didn't shoot any POV shots. Like, like I never, I never got literally into the character's eyes. And I, I'm, I'm always very disappointed in myself when I realize that I haven't um, focused enough on the, the POV of the character. And so I think Be More Honest is just a, a really great comprehensive piece of advice. Just like always challenge yourself. And, and, and question whether or not this is like as truthful as, as a, a moment could be.